Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I've got a nice bedtime foam rolling routine for you so you can relax and recover before your next training session. But before we get into that, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday I'm putting out videos on resolving aches and pains, preventing injuries, and optimizing your performance overall. So jump on it. Ready? Let's get into this one. All right guys, so today I've got a nice bedtime foam rolling routine for you. It's gonna take about 20 minutes, but it's a great way to relax and wind down before you head to bed and to help start speeding up your recovery process if you've done a nice tough workout recently that you need to uh, bounce back from a little bit quicker. If you didn't watch my last video, The Ultimate Guide to Foam Rolling, I'm gonna put that right around here somewhere, and that'll give you a little bit more information on why we would wanna do a bedtime foam roll. It's honestly one of the best times to do it, but go ahead and go and watch that, because it's gonna give you more information of why to actually do it bedtime, or um, there's other times that we'd wanna use it, but we won't get into that today. So. Bedtime routine, it's gonna take us about 20 minutes. We're gonna hit all the major muscle groups today. Um, we're going from thoracic spinal column through the core musculature and into the legs a little bit. And we're gonna spend two minutes in each area. So we're really gonna allow ourselves to settle in using a pressure wave technique. And we're gonna do a little bit of tack and floss, but mostly the pressure wave will be our focus where we're rolling that roller over the larger muscle groups for about anywhere from like a six inch range to a 12 inch range altogether. So we wanna hit these nice big stretches of tissue and actually get those loosened up and release any um, tension that we have there neurologically where we might be overactive in some of those muscles. So grab your foam roller, cause here we go. So we're gonna start on that foam roller running across our back working thoracic extension to begin with. So I wanna place the foam roller across the low rib cage here, hands behind the head, engage the abs, keep the stomach tight, and I'm gonna arch back, pushing the back of my head into that foam roller, into my hands, not the foam roller. And I'm just gonna work my way up gradually. I wanna make sure that I'm not arching my back in the lumbar spine. I'm just working a few little points at a time here. Till I get all the way up to the base of my neck. Once I get there, I can start to work back down again. And the reason we want to start with thoracic extension is because I'm betting that most of you did a good amount of sitting today. And that's okay. We just want to account for it. And you might be getting some little cracks out already. Okay, now from there, we're gonna work on the lat of the right side. So I'm just gonna turn my body off to the side here. And here's where we're gonna use that pressure wave to really work to start. So I'm working that lat, which is the tissue starting from the base of the armpit there. Right underneath that armpit. And then even thins out and runs kind of along the ribs at the base here. So this might even help with a little bit of your thoracic rotation. 
Now if you feel some tenderness under that armpit, what I want you to do is stick on it and reach your arm out overhead a few times. And this is that tack and floss technique. So we're putting pressure down on those tissues that are tender and then we're actually pulling those tissues through that pressure and you should notice the intensity kind of dissipate as you go on here. This is a great way to restore overhead extension of the arm. I'm going to roll across those tissues perpendicularly a little bit. Just keep breathing. And then we'll go back into that roll a little bit more. So I'm a little more on my back here. Take your time. Play with different positions. We're going to switch sides now. So now I'm going to work that left lat. And you can see I'm just kind of using my legs to roll here a little bit. I'm going across perpendicular again. If those tissues are tender, doing a few reaches, pulling those tissues through the pressure, pinning down the tender points. There's a nice crack. <laughs> and anytime that there's intensity, it should always be discomfort, never pain. So we're never jumping into anything that's painful here. Just discomfort to the pressure is okay. If anything's painful, jump ship right away, move out of that position, but otherwise feel pretty free to play around with your movements, rolling across, up and down, and moving the arm are all good options. Alright, so from here what we're going to do is actually go into the obliques next. So what I want you to do is now move the foam roller so your forearm is down on the bottom side to start here. And I'm just going to keep that rested. And the foam roller should run pretty much right below my last rib here and just above my pelvis. So I'm hitting the soft tissues right around those love handles of that waistline. I'm going to take my free hand, put it over my head here, and I'm going to touch my elbow to my hand that's planted. So for the oblique, it's almost like you're doing a little bit of a side crunch. And we want to feel that foam roller hold steady and I'm moving the tissues rather than moving the foam roller. Now as I roll back here, it's never crossing over my lumbar spine. I'm always on that angle where it won't actually put pressure directly on the lumbar spine. It's off to the side of it. I can feel it pushing those tissues and that's okay. If you want to make it a little bit more pressure, you take the arm up here a little bit further out or even all the way extended overhead.
as you get more comfortable with this position. You can make it a little bit bigger movement, almost coming up into the front of the oblique some. And we're gonna switch sides. The ultimate goal here is to really allow that foam roller to sink into these tissues as much as possible. So the neurological tone is basically how much engagement we feel from that musculature that we're putting pressure against. And a lot of times when there's discomfort is correlated to the fact that there's a high neurological uh, innervation of that tissue and the body's really active in that area. So if we can get it to actually release, decrease that neural tone some, that's when we see those pain signals actually decrease as well. Remember, as it gets a little bit more open up or a little bit less discomfort, you can always make it a little bit more challenging on yourself by taking out that arm that's underneath, going a little bit further into it. If you can control most your breath through your nose, you're gonna actually take in a lot more oxygen and help activate your parasympathetic nervous system at the same time here. So using those deep breaths through the nose as much as possible. All right, now we're just gonna take it another step lower and we're actually gonna move into the glutes. So you're gonna sit up here We'll go back to that forearm position and I want to make a diamond with my feet again here and I'm just going to start to roll vertically along the glutes there and up at the hip I want to do a little bit of a horizontal as well. That's going to allow me to get my glute mead as well as the glute max when I'm doing both the vertical roll and that little bit of a horizontal at the top of my pelvis. So now I'm not crossing over that um, arch of my pelvis, that hard bony structure there. I'm staying in basically what I call the wheel wells of our pelvis here. So if you can imagine a, a tractor tire, the back of the tractor, those big tires, that's where our glutes are. Kind of a funny imagery, I know, but it works for me. Hopefully it works for you. So if you find any points here, what we can do is actively flex the butt nice and tight. So I'm driving into it. And then on the release, try and let the foam roller sink deeper into the tissues. Now this is a global smash of the tissues because of all the area that the foam roller takes up on my glutes here. The other thing you can try is actually straightening the leg and flexing and bending. So we're actually moving, bending, straightening, using that as a tool to help free up those tissues as well. Okay, we're going to switch sides on the glutes here. Once again, make that diamond down on the forearm. Start with a vertical roll, test those tissues out, search for tenderness. Also at that top point, doing that horizontal roll across into the TFL a little bit, across the glute med. A lot of times TFL is overactive when the glutes are underactive. 
So you might notice a lot of tension at one of your TFLs, which is this pocket muscle right here. It kind of makes that musculature right at the hip pocket. It helps to coordinate your breath with the roll and the flex and release itself. So if you're finding a tense point that you need to help release, take a nice deep breath in as you're flexing. And on the exhale, you're releasing the tissue, letting the foam roller sink in deeper to those tissues. Last range we're gonna hit are the quadriceps. Now the quadriceps will be the last of this range, but we wanna start with is kind of a plank position. I have my free leg out to the side to help me move. I'm braced through the core nice and tight, so I do wanna make sure my abs are engaged well, and I'm not arching my back or letting it sink down. And we're gonna start with that pressure wave. Now I like to search the quads in kind of three different strips. There's that lateral strip. There's the medial strip right down the center or the middle strip, I should say. And then the medial side, which is going to be that inner thigh. So working my way from the front of the hip all the way down walking it till I'm almost right above that knee. And just focusing on those three different strips, the outside, the middle, the inside. Whatever's speaking the most to you, spend some time in that area here on this. If you find some real tender points, take a moment and do what I call that tack and floss, so we got it pinned. Now we're gonna pull the heel toward the glutes, try and restore some of that flexion of the knee. Once again, up high at the hip, you can kind of catch the TFL on this side as well. Switching legs. Now the quads will be the last that we do. I won't be doing any hamstring stuff. And that's because I don't feel that the foam roller is the best tool to actually get into those hamstrings. So I prefer other techniques to help the hamstrings get a release if we need or focus on self myofascial release of the hamstrings. I feel like the foam roller is most effective on pretty much all the areas we touched on in this session. You might have a little heat going from the session right now little warmth, that's okay. What I would recommend finishing on is going to be a diaphragmatic breathing position. So put your feet up on the couch, 90-90, 90 degrees at the knee, 90 degrees at the hip, and just breathe for two to three minutes from the diaphragm. And that'll really top off the session.
You might have noticed some asymmetries as you've been working today. Just take note of those. It's always interesting to see where your body is innervated a little bit more, where there's a little bit more uh, tension and neural engagement. So we'll finish on that note, guys. All right, and there you guys have it. A nice 20 minute bedtime routine for foam rolling. It's a great way to wind down, get those muscles to recover, get some lymphatic flow going. You might notice that after doing self-myofascial release like this, where we're actually rolling larger sections, that you kind of have to pee. That's okay. That's part of getting the fluids in our bodies flowing, and we're actually going to help our body eliminate some of the byproduct, that waste byproduct. And it comes out in one of two ways. So there you have it. If you guys like this video, make sure you take a moment to let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share it with a friend. You know that they need to be sleeping better at night too. This is one of the best benefits of it. So we're using it to actually enhance our quality of sleep. Not necessarily the quantity, but the quality of the sleep should be deeper because we've got those neurological tissues that were overactive a little bit decreased now in that tone. So share it with a friend, get them sleeping better at night. They'll thank you for it. If you haven't already, take a moment, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, a video on resolving aches and pains, preventing injury, and overall optimizing your human performance. How cool is that? And if you guys need something specifically tailored to you, make sure you take a moment to drop by the website. We've got that link down below. You can head by there, fill out the coaching application, and we'll get you started and headed in the right direction in no time. I want to thank you guys for watching today. See you next time.